It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a drone. Unmanned flight is here and is on the rise. But what are the challenges that the drone industry faces? What industries are investing in drone technology? And how does that impact you and our communities? David Heath of the Pennsylvania Drone Association joins us to discuss those questions and more. That's all coming up right here, right now. I'm Sam Chen, and this is Face the Issues. Good evening and welcome to Face the Issues. I'm your host, Sam Chen. Unmanned flight. Years ago, it was just the stuff that science fiction was made of. But today, with the drone industry on the rise, unmanned flight is here. So what are drones? And how do they impact our community? What industries are investing in unmanned flight? And what does the future look like for it? I'm pleased tonight to be joined by David Heath, the director of the Pennsylvania Drone Association. David, thanks so much for being here and welcome to the program. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm ecstatic to be here. It's our pleasure to have you here and I appreciate you taking the time. Let's start just from the very top 30,000 foot level, no okay. pun intended. <laughs> yeah. When we say the word drone, uh, I, again, like we said in the intro, 10, 15, or 30 some years ago, we would think unmanned flight. This is the kind of stuff we see in science fiction. Yeah. What is a drone? J just I, to start from the very beginning. I, I think that's a very important question because we can talk about uh, the drone itself or the system as a whole. So in, in the, the community, we, we refer to it as UAS, okay. which is Unmanned Aerial Systems. Uh, because whenever we talk about it, it's not just the, the vehicle or the drone itself. It's everything that comes al uh, along with it, the network um, and, and where the pilot actually stands. Okay. So uh, obviously unmanned, we're talking about you know, a vehicle flying without a man on board. Um, and especially we, we like to talk about small UAS or SUAS, uh, which is between um, half a pound and 55 pound aircraft. Okay, so these aren't necessarily huge machines that we're talking about? Uh, no, but those are also in, in the discussion as well. I mean, there are people movers and, and what, what Uber is doing with them as sure. well, and, and Pennsylvania companies helping them with that. Sure. How, talk to me briefly, uh, just really so our viewers can get a picture of it. How does a drone work? I mean, obviously we're familiar with how manned aircraft works, an airplane, a helicopter, whatever. How does an unmanned vehicle like this, and, and and even broader than that, an unmanned system, because he says it's not just the vehicle itself, yeah. it's the whole system. How does that work? How does that operate? Uh, much like uh, a RC car or, or anything like that, there's a remote control system with a video screen. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the vehicle itself, whether or not uh, the, the styles of those change, whether or not it's a rotocopter, a quadcopter, or, or um, or more, or a vertical, um, uh, different vertical takeoff and landing mm -hmm. vehicles and fixed wing aircraft as well. So uh, it, there's, there's a multitude, but it's the base is, is obviously the control unit and, and then the vehicle itself. So there's a, a lot of different kinds of drones. Oh, there's, there's <laughs> un, unknown numbers of drones and, and drone manufacturers are creating new different models every single day. Is it different to fly a different kind of drone? Like, so for example, flying an airplane and flying a helicopter is different. Even flying a different kinds of airplane and different kinds of choppers, there's, there's certain differences in that yeah, the it, technique it, is it, the same thing applied for in the tool itself uh, in, in the industry they call it platforms okay. what, what platform are, are you going to be flying you know, are you giant, flying a DJI Mavic Pro or are you flying um, a, a different version a Parrot or what have you and so they all have different uses and different capabilities and obviously pilot differently as well yeah. that, that makes sense so where are drones being used today what, what is the big drive behind I mean the drone market is growing consistently Absolutely. What is driving that? I mean, to some extent, you see it's a little bit, it's made its way into the community of hobbyists yes. who like to collect drones or play with drones. Yep. But industry is using drones and really driving this expansion of, of unmanned flight. What are big industries using drones? What are they using them for? Uh, I challenge in, in my meeting with the legislators to find an industry that isn't incorporating drones Fair at enough. this point. Uh, but uh, big drivers, uh, the utilities, mm -hmm. um, 
insurance, mining, construction, uh, I think I said real estate as well, um, just the data and software industry uh, with, with artificial intelligence that comes mm -hmm. along because uh, it's not just the flying vehicle, it's also the tool in which is, is attached to it and, and yeah. how they can help in, incorporate that. Um, public safety with, with our first responders. Sure. Um, also, just, just even um, other different tech applications as well. We see, I guess, one of the first things most people think of outside the hobbyists when they think of drones is they think of Amazon and all those yeah. ads Amazon ran and delivering packages with drones. Absolutely. Um, that's what I'm getting is that's just one very small sector of the larger picture of, of the usage for drones. Yeah. The, uh, the transportation side of, of uh, drone delivery, uh, it's, it's not very small. It's a, it's a very big um, possibility, and, and it's being actively done uh, outside of the U.S. and is starting mm -hmm. to be done with inside the United States as well, in North Carolina and in Virginia and other locations as well. Um, but, but the applications are, are, are so vast, and the possibilities yeah. with this technology are, are, are bar none. Yep. Unpack some of that for me with like you, you have brought up first responders are using yes. it. So where obviously they're not d using it in the same for the same reasons that Amazon is. They're not delivering. Hopefully they're Correct. not delivering do it yourself yeah. fire packages. <laughs> what where does that come in for a fire department or for EMS or how are they utilizing the drone technology? Actually they they are delivering some things. Oh, are they? Yeah. So that's for EMS and first responders in rural locations, they're able to deliver AEDs via drone. Oh, that's neat. And so, obviously, a drone can fly to a location much quicker to drop off someone mm -hmm. in, in having cardiac arrest and, and drop off uh, an AED um, is, is an cool. invaluable tool. Um, whenever we get into firefighting, we can talk about thermal imaging attachments mm -hmm. that can see through smoke, identify people in fires and hot spots in fires, which educate uh, the firefighters on where to direct their hoses. Because obviously, sure. right now, all they're doing is judging the the smoke right. um, and being, ap being able to see what's actually happening within the fire and, and obviously the bird's eye view, having it up in the air. Sure. Uh, I was just in a meeting uh, with Hack and, mm -hmm. and he was at a fire and he said that they didn't even know that they had victims that were on the outskirts of, oh, wow. of, of the building, uh, actually on the edge of the forest because all their efforts were, were put towards coming out and they didn't realize that they had victims on the outside. But had he had a drone up in the air, sure. having an over, overview of, of the site, he would have known the scenario and the situation that he had at hand as well. Are these drones outfitted for their different purposes then? Like the, you're talking about the ability for it to detect heat patterns and Correct. to know. So the, I'm assuming that drone, their outfit, or they're either creating it or they're adding something to it specifically for those purposes? Yeah, at the, and there's companies built specifically for their attachments. Okay. Um, FLIR thermal, uh, thermal cameras is, is a huge um, market as well. A, a good Pennsylvania company that has crazy high imaging is Phase One Industrial. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they their cameras are, are top of the line, and, and what they can do with them is, is phenomenal. How big is the drone industry? How widespread is it now? And where do you see that going and growing? Yeah, so in 2013, uh, an economic impact study came in, and it estimated the industry to be at $82.1 billion wow. by 2025. Okay. Okay. Uh, and and so obviously that's that's no drop in the bucket. That's, right. that's a very big impact. Uh, PwC just did a, a report on global impact of the UAS industry, and I believe it was 130 billion dollars globally. Okay. Is 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 how large we're talking? Um, just in. Uh, just recently, from a state perspective, uh, looking at the economic impact, Pennsylvania came in ranked top 10 in, okay. the, in that study, be, being towards economic impact um, fiscally uh, towards the industry. And, and I think that that's a great opportunity yeah. and, and why we're here is because a lot of people don't know about yeah. that. And do you see this growing even further in the future? Absolutely. I, I mean, right now, just, just in, since we've been uh, created, uh, I mean, we're moving so fast because people have so much interest in, in the, the positive um, features that, that mm -hmm. come out of, out of UAS uh, application. Yeah, and one of the things you, you mentioned to me before, too, is just that it, I mean, obviously nationally, internationally, too, a lot I mean, other countries are doing this as well. Yes. Big impact on the economy. What, and, and big impact for the different industries. It really streamlines some of their efforts. Correct. 
how big of it how big of an impact does it make here in Pennsylvania? You've mentioned before that a lot of these companies are actually based here in the state. Yep. And talk a little bit about your work with the association. Um, how many how many companies are we looking at that are based here? How big is that impact? What does that mean for Pennsylvania? Yeah, where, where I just mentioned coming in ranked top ten, yeah. there are so many um, Pennsylvania-based companies that are really driving this industry, not only just in Pennsylvania, but on the global market. Wow. Um, some of the top de Department of Defense contractors are, are located right outside of Philly, um, and, and some of the, the forward thinkers, whether it's AGI um, and their OneSky or, or um, Near Earth Autonomy out in Pittsburgh and, mm -hmm. and what they're doing. These, these are industry leaders that um, provide lots of jobs within the area. Um, the tax revenue that, that could come in off of, uh, obviously, the economic impact. In that study, I believe it said it was about $12 million wow. annually is what the state could wow. could make just off of. And that's just this state? That's just this state. Oh yeah, that's that's just Pennsylvania. Yeah. So what, and, and we'll pick this up after we go to break too, but what are, are I mean, this is great for the state. It's great economically. It's great. The individual industries are behind it. They see the benefit for them, but also for the constituencies that they serve. Where is Where are the concerns that come in generally that you hear or that your clients hear about unmanned flight? Our biggest challenge is actually public perception okay. and what they think of whenever they see a drone flying. Sure. And, and that's, that's a challenge that's not in Pennsylvania, that's, that's globally. Sure. Uh, and so being able to educate and, and um, provide comfort, comfort through education, through the applications and, and commercial uses, um, making it a, a regular thing that they see where they know if they see a drone in the air that they're flying responsibly. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our biggest fear also is, is that one uneducated person flying in the wrong place at the wrong sure. time. Uh, that can cause slapstick uh, regulation and things that, that really dampen uh, down the, the industry. And that's the last thing that we want. Right. Sometimes it only takes one. Yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And, and we want to make sure that we get out ahead of that. Yeah, that's great. When we come back, let's continue that part of the conversation. Um, don't go away. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Face the Issues. David, thank you again for being here. Um, first half of the show, we're talking about drones in a very large, uh, very broad sense and a lot of education. Now, to what you said before we went to break, that is a lot of the work that needs to be done, though, the educating side of it and un helping the public understand what drones are. You left off with a thought that you're explaining that there is a certain perception that drones may have in, among the public. We see that a lot. I think for a lot of Americans, their introduction to drones was their, its usage by the military and warfare. Coming off of that, some people, there's a fear that drones are used as a spying device. Yeah. Uh, are these some of the challenges that you, you and your organization see regularly when it comes to perception? A absolutely. Uh, I mean, drones have been integrated in the military with, with airspace since 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, they've, been, they've been working with, with unmanned vehicles. And, and so back in October when the state passed its first piece of legislation with Act 78, uh, they, they actually specifically identified privacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of a little bit redundant because the federal government in, in their Part 107 already talks about you know, privacy issues as well. Um, so people are concerned on that sure. end. And, uh, and, and technology is actually providing that answer as well in the future. What do you say to someone, because that's a legitimate concern, right? That someone says, hey, if someone's yeah. got a drone and they're, and to your point, it may not even be the industry. It just may be that one operator that is flying it improperly or so forth. Yeah. What do you say to someone that says, oh, I don't really want a drone flying over my, my house or that, you know, that could spy on me or so forth? Uh, How do you respond to that? Well, as I, as I mentioned previously, is technology kind of has the answer for that already. Mm -hmm. And that's in something uh, that is called remote ID. Okay. Uh, and so what that does is, is, is essentially a digital signature um, letting uh, other parties know who is piloting that aircraft. And what it allows yeah. is, is so for the, the safe, responsible person or the one-off, mm -hmm. uh, it allows authorities to be able to identify right. who that operator is and right. hold them accountable for any um, irresponsible actions sure. they may be uh, taking part in. Right. You said that's called remote ID. Remote ID, that's, which just leads the way right. to uh, UTM. 
And what's UTM? UTM is Unmanned Traffic Management. Okay. It's kind of the future of how our, our national airspace is going to become integrated between mm -hmm. manned and unmanned aviation. Um, and remote ID is the next step because obviously we need to be able to identify all the aircraft that are in the sky um, and, and it will eventually uh, open up the door, open up the skies um, a little bit more to allow unmanned aircraft to operate more freely. Sure. And so I, I know you spent time in the airline industry. Yes. So in the airline industry, if someone, I mean, there are flight plans that are approved ahead of time. Yeah. People know which plane, what call number, which pilot. Correct. Is that the similar where they want to be able to come out with when the unmanned with unmanned vehicles or unmanned services, one, to know that there are flight plans yeah. so they're not just anywhere and everywhere, but then two, to be able to identify who's operating? Is that kind of the idea that they're yeah, moving toward? Yeah, I mean, it, it exists to a point right now with mm -hmm. a program that the FAA has called Lance okay. around airports where within a five mile radius of an airport or, or other critical infrastructure where they're actually, um, and also technology blocks them out through geofencing, like okay. DJI has geofencing that you have to unlock, okay. you get the unlock code through Lance to be able to fly Got in it. those okay. areas. Um, it, it lets the FAA know who's operating around those areas so they're in a safe, safe manner. That makes sense. There, the, uh, when we talk about public perception, which I know is a big part of the work that you do, uh, obviously we address some of the privacy concerns um, and we address, I think a lot, there's a lot, again, the people who just, they've seen and they learned about drones in the context of it being used as a, a war machine. And there's almost a, a connotation that drones can be dangerous. Okay. Um, how do you address that? How do you, I mean, even to say if we're not using drones in a battle or in an act of war, what about that one operator that's not flying it properly? Can you crash a drone? What happens if yeah. you crash a drone? Things like that. So one of the, one of the key uh, purposes of the association is safety. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would echo that uh, with, with how the FAA UAS Integration Office, their number one goal is safety. Last thing we want to ever have happen is, is any incident that would cause injury, sure. uh, period. And so through, through standardization within the industry and, and education uh, and training is how that's combated. Uh, ASTM International, which is actually another Pennsylvania-based standardization organization, uh, created a council called F-38, and, and they identified those issues specifically. And, and they were able to test actually a parachute system uh, uh, up in New York uh, and created the standard for safe flight over people because as of right okay. now you cannot fly over people with a drone with part 107 without a waiver it is okay. illegal to fly over people and so through para zero a company with a excuse me uh, uh, attached parachute yeah. to drone if, if anything happens it deploys the, the parachute and so the parachute is attached to the drone attached oh, to the that's drone. fascinating yep so it's illegal right now to fly a drone over an area of people? Correct. Okay, so where, where are they flying the drones? Uh, where there aren't people. Oh. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I walked into that one. <laughs> no, uh, I, I mean, ultimately the, the goal is to be able to fly freely um, wh wherever it may be, but sure. there's already limitations within part 107. You can't fly over people, you can't fly at night, you can't pl mm -hmm. fly above 400 feet, you can't, um, uh, there, there's a whole myriad of, of waivers that, that that you can apply for to, sure. to fly those. Um, and so flying over people, they're starting to grant those waivers now at the federal level to mm -hmm. allow for them because of the standards that sure. were created by ASTM and other organizations um, that allowed for the, that safe operation. And if they're, if, so you have to apply for the waiver in order to do it. Correct. And so it's again, not just a bunch of people who are just doing this. Yeah. The government is gonna know they're gonna be regulating which pilots get the licenses or the waivers to fly over people Correct. and so the forth. So. The FAA is, is working diligently to, to work on that. Obviously the technology is moving forward faster sure. than, than where the regulations are, but we wanna allow time for the FAA to be able to, to own those regulations and, and manage it properly. Right. Let me ask you this, in your mind, where do you see, or why do you see the, the issue with drones as being so imperative? And, and what would you say to the public? Uh, we, we talk about public perception, some of the concerns the public has. Yeah. What would you say to them about why drones and the future of unmanned flight is so important, not just on the national scale, but to, to communities? I, I think, uh, 
There, there's there's a myriad of reasons. Sure. Um, uh, one safety actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about the the safety of flight, but also the safety of of people. Not sending yeah. people up towers to do inspections or down sure. into hazardous areas to do inspections. Or uh, we can talk about efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mentioned before the show about Beyond Visual Line of Sight doing 51 miles of inspection in yeah. six hours of power lines. Um, that type of efficiency um, coupled with that with uh, AI as well that that allow for that to to happen. Um, safety, efficiency, um, security uh, sure. with with eyes in the sky and being yeah. able to, to have that type of, I mean, there are cameras everywhere. everywhere. I mean, we're right. surrounded by cameras right, <laughs> <laughs> right now. But uh, being able to have that, that type of information and that data that can come through yeah. um, is, is so valuable whenever it is done so in a responsible manner. Sure, and you had mentioned earlier too, just about how first responders use, use drone mm -hmm. technology. I mean, there's a sense, and I mean, do you, are we seeing it yet? Is, is it something that that is ha, that where this is happening a lot with first responders? Are they utilizing the drone technology right now? And, and how are we seeing that impact their ability to save lives? Uh, absolutely, those those success stories are are coming through, mm -hmm. uh, and and part of our our mission was actually the creation of our PA Drone Foundation mm -hmm. uh, underneath us, which is specifically geared towards educating public safety and first responders. Uh, those those success stories are why it's able to save lives not only just of the first responders but also the victims sure. in those scenarios as well sure where do you hope to see drones go in the future and, and the industry in general i i hope and and i strongly believe that uh, integrating the national airspace where when you're um, landing in a 737 that you know that there's a safe operating drone mm -hmm. um, right beside you and, and sharing that airspace. Mm -hmm. uh, right now it's commonplace when you're sitting in your backyard to see uh, planes and, and their yeah. contrails fly, fly over and no one thinks anything of it. Right. Uh, that's what I hope that, that the, the future of the unmanned industry will be as sure. well. And how soon do you think we get there? Ooh, um, I, I would, I would, I w wouldn't be surprised if it's if it's in the next decade. That'd be great. Yeah. You'll be there. You'll be oh, there. I'll, I'll, way. I'll be there and, and making Pennsylvania as good a habitat as possible for that unmanned industry integration. Uh, that's yep. great, David. Thank you so much. Yep, no problem. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Face the Issues. David, thank you again for joining us and thank you for just really sharing your expertise on a topic that I think most people know peripherally, but peripherally about, but not necessarily really the, the nuts and bolts about it. Um, always like to close out the show, just kind of getting to know the guests a little yeah. bit more, um, yeah. humanizing the people that we see on our screen. I understand you were heavily involved with the Cadets Drum and Bugle Corps. Yeah, it's, it's a local Allentown um, DCI uh, organization. I marched that whenever I was in college, and I'm actually attending a show tonight uh, here in Allentown uh, to, to help support uh, Drum Corps and, and uh, the marching arts. Oh, that's so neat. So how, how did you get involved in Drum Corps? What did you love about oh, it? Oh, man. I, I started out in high school marching band. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually in the blue band with Penn State as well. Okay. And and so I wanted to take it to the the professional level yeah. essentially, and and I became a member and auditioned and became a member of, of the Cadets Drum and Bugle Corps. How big is how big of a, uh, how popular is this? Is it, is it more popular <laughs> uh, uh, The than dorks of the it? world may know it. <laughs> the band dorks of the world may know it. But uh, I, I mean, it's it's over 100 members. You, you tour around the country um, all summer. Uh, performing at different venues, sleeping on buses and gym floors, oh, wow. and and it's it's uh, it's definitely the best and worst experience of my life. That's yeah. for sure. Do you still do it? Oh no, you well you can. There's DCA, but okay. you age out actually at 21. Oh really? Yeah, it's, oh, okay. it's all it's all about college. Okay. College age. So now you're the retired. Yeah, I'm, Godfather. I, I'm the, the I'm the board. alum that goes on and roots on on for my team. Oh, yeah. that's so funny. Um, and is this like a national thing? Yeah, yeah, well, technically so international. international. Yep. It's, yeah, it's, I marched the side of, of people from Japan and Germany oh, wow. that, that were with me. And, and there's a big group right here in Allentown. Yep, big saying. here right in Allentown. Oh, that's incredible. Well, yep. I hope you enjoy the show. That's, that's just a fascinating <laughs> uh, piece. We always like to get to know our guests a little bit better on, on a personal level. Absolutely. Um, now, let me ask you this to close out. How did you go from, from something like drum corps into aviation 
and ultimately where you are today? It, it all started out as a part-time job in college. Okay. Um, I worked part-time for United Airlines at the time, just um, slinging bags. And uh, someone warned me while I was there. I mean, I was studying engineering at Penn State, and they were like, be careful, the aviation industry, once it bites you, it gets a hold <laughs> of you. And, and, and by golly, he was right. I, I fell in love with aviation and, and con- decided to continue my career um, with them and, and work my way up to, to management. And um, from there, you know, the airline industry is pretty busy, 24-7, 365. I decided it was time for a change, and, and this opportunity um, presented itself, and, and I, I grabbed a hold of it. That's great. Well, David, thank you for joining us, and thank you for sharing your expertise with us and with our viewers about drones and, and the future of unmanned flight. Yeah, no problem. Shit. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. My thanks to David again for joining us and for discussing Drones in the future of unmanned flight. If you do have questions, you can visit their website, which is going to appear here on your screen. And always, I know they're more than happy to entertain any questions from the public. As we close, a brief note, uh, a personal note from on my end. I was at a coffee shop yesterday, and a woman, a stranger, walked in and placed an order for two donuts. Simple order. I paid no attention to it as I was attending to some of my own writings. She then came over to my table, handed me the bag of donuts and said, here, enjoy some donuts and have a great day. I didn't get her name. I barely got a chance to thank her before she left. But to her, this is a shout out to that stranger, that anonymous stranger. There are still good people in this world. So thank you for what you do and continue to do that. God bless you. That is all the time that we have tonight. I want to thank David for joining us and tune in again next week as we unpack another issue. My name is Sam Chen. On behalf of all of us here at Face the Issues, Thank you and good night.